What is going on guys? Today we are going to be going through a full installation on this 2016 GLA. We're going to be adding our 10.25 inch Android display. Uh, we'll go through the full installation, all the wiring, pretty much everything that you need to get this job done. This will also work in the A-Class. We already have a video in the A-Class, so if you're wondering about an A-Class, that video is in the top right hand corner. Um, but today we'll go through the GLA and yeah, let's jump right into it. Inside the box, we've got the new screen. This is the 10 inch display. That's the back of the screen there. So we've got both of our power connections, uh, 4G and GPS antenna. And then on the side of the unit here, you can put a storage card and a SIM card for data. Then we've got all of the wiring. So what we'll do, we'll jump in the car, pull the car apart, and then we'll go through the wiring as we go. And that is pretty much what comes in the kit. So for the A-Class, GLA-Class, pretty straightforward. All right, firstly, I want to talk about the different NTG versions. So this is a 2016 GLA. This screen will work on all of the GLA models with this interior, but you will have a different NTG version. This is what NTG 5 looks like. You go media, you've got Bluetooth, okay? If you've got NTG 4.7, the screen will look a little bit different. I'll put a photo in. And NTG 4.5 is a little bit different again. I'll put a photo in. The unit is compatible with all three, but it is important that you know what NTG system you are running. Your vents might look slightly different. Uh, these are an aftermarket add-on. But as long as your dash looks predominantly like this, you're good to go. Okay, now with that out of the way, we want to remove the radio, the screen, the glove box, and some of this center area as well here, which will get video footage of. Um, to remove the radio, we're gonna pop these two vents out. So they're just gonna pull straight back and out, and that will allow us to undo two Torx 25 volts, or Torx 20 volts, sorry. Um, and then we can remove the radio, so we'll get that done. Okay, there's a couple of ways to get these vents out. I'm gonna say they'll pop out pretty easily because they're aftermarket. Uh, we've had in the past some very, very, very hard uh, vents to get out. If that's the case, remove the glove box, okay? There's only a few screws in the glove box. There's three up here, a couple at the bottom. Behind this, there's another one. And you can actually get to the vent and push it from behind. Uh, let's just see how we go first. Yeah, nice and easy. And then just be careful because there's your little LED. Okay, so I guess that clicks on like so. And that's what gives you light. So you just need to make sure when you pop it back in, you put that LED back on. Okay, then right here, there's the two screws. So if you look down, you can't miss them. They're two Torx 20s. Boom, just pop them out. They don't need to come all the way out. They sit in their little house. Okay, once they're unscrewed, they've got little tabs on them. Push it out, look at that. That's the radio out. Nice and easy. There's a little plug right here. Don't forget to unplug it. And very importantly, don't forget to plug it back in. Okay, I've had a lot of customers uh, buy the A-Class version and they fit it and say all of this has stopped working. It has not stopped working. You forgot to plug it back in. Okay, and further to that point, when you pull all of these out, take a good look and note of what you've unplugged check the colors and every single plug because you may have for example there's a small green right here there's no small green here so you can very easily mix up the plugs you know you might that might fall down you not see it you just plug all these back in and then you know dab or something stops working so be very very wary of that and next up the original screen at the back of the screen, there's two tabs. So what you're gonna do, get a little pick tool, pop open the tab very carefully. Boom, one, two, okay. And there's two Torx 20s behind that as well. Okay, and then the screen lifts up and out and you've got one, two plugs. That pick will come in handy with those plugs as well. Um, we'll set that away somewhere safe. Okay, next up we're going to be removing this piece right here. Just pop out everything that's in it, open this up. This is very easy. It unclips, so we're just going to pull straight up. Nice and easy. And you're going to go ahead and unplug the two plugs. Or three, you might have three on there. Now what we're going to be doing here, there's two Torx 20s. So we're going to pop these open. And I will explain soon in more detail exactly why we're removing this. But for now, we're just in the removal stages. Okay, next up is the glove box. You, you can probably get away with this install without removing the glove box. 
but I would say remove the glove box. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay, it's a little clip right there. Another one up here. Another one down here. The whole thing comes out nice and easy. There's a Torx 20 right here. So I've got two Torx 20s here. I've got a small one for little easy to get to places. I've got a large one for so I can put a bit more torque on tight screws. Right underneath here, you've got one, two, three more, which you, I'm gonna see if we can do it with this. Okay, so with a short Torx 20, you can get it. So you can get those screws with a short Torx 20. Otherwise, you'll need a right angle, which is a tool that I have. That's the right angle. So you'll need something like that or a small ratchet or something. Underneath, there's a panel that has two clips on it. So you can just use something like this or a pick, pop the clips out. So someone's already done ambient lighting in this car and from what I see so far, they've not done a very clean job. But anyway, once that clip is out and that's just held in, so that panel right there is held in by two small clips that pulls out. Those are the clips there. Then there's one more Torx 20 up here. Okay, then the whole thing will pop out, down and out, okay? There's one plug on the glove box and the whole thing is out. So that's very easy to remove. Okay, with that all tidied up, now we can look at the wiring. Number one, nice and easy. This is just gonna go, it's got a black plug, go straight into the blue plug. Boom. What we're gonna do is a bit of cable management as we go. So, okay, common question. Does the factory reverse camera work? Yes, it does. Second question, do we need any of this stuff here? No, tape it up. We've got two USB ports here. You can tape them up if you want, or you can run them. I'll run them first, then tape them up after. They're just gonna go in. Okay. Another reason why having the glove box out is good. Boom. Look at that. Okay, so it took about three minutes to take the glove box out, and I've saved about three hours trying to muck around feed, ca feeding cabling through. Beautiful. So, small plug on the small side. Okay, you need to make sure the plugs come on the right sides. You don't want them coming across because it's going to get in the way of your bracket. So we've got small plug and GPS on one side. So we're going to get the GPS antenna to come out through here and the 4G antenna to come out through there. And this plug here, we're going to tape it up because we don't need it. Next up, GPS antenna. What you're going to do with this, you'll want it nice and high on the dash. And another good reason for the glove box out is you can get it all the way up to here from the underneath so you don't see it. We like to do clean installations where you don't see anything. This is the 4G antenna. Okay, so this is for your Wi-Fi CarPlay or Bluetooth CarPlay, whatever you want to call it. Wireless CarPlay basically is what it is. Put this wherever you want. I like to go in behind the dash, somewhere nice. So what I'll do is I'll run these and then I'll mount the GPS and the Wi-Fi and show you where I put each of them. Okay guys, that is the Wi-Fi antenna right here. And I've put a zip tie around it just to stop it from going anywhere. The GPS antenna, you can kind of see it there. Oh, I don't think you'll see it. It's up there, double-sided down and wedged between the vent and the dash. That's as high as you're going to be able to get it. And it's like right up here, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. These two could just run into the glove box when you put the glove box back in. And the excess loom I've attached to the main loom in the car. I'm sure you might be able to see that. Yep. And that's it for those. So, and just remembering we've run the cables to the correct sides. And now we can continue on with the installation here. All right guys, explanation time. So the NTG5 does not come with an auxiliary input. These screens all use AUX, all of them, okay? So the AUX is hardwired, but, or plugged in, you know, physically plugged in, taped up. You don't get any sound problems. It sounds completely fine. I get that question a lot. I've never had a, anyone return or have a problem with sound quality, but the NTG5, does not have an AUX input. So there's a way around that. Um, and for the NTG 4.5 and NTG 4.7, you do have an AUX input, but the late 4.7, you also need to do this, what I'm about to show you, okay? So in some cases you need to do this, and in some you don't. In the NTG 5, you 100% have to do this, and this is what it is, boom. So that there, it's got an AUX port on it, and USB on one end. So that's gonna plug right in. So you see how we removed this before? That's going to plug right into the USB port, like so. And then we're going to run the cabling underneath this panel to here. Plug that in, tape it up so it doesn't bang around nicely, and then run the AUX from here to the screen. 
And now the reason for that is what this does. That little device tells the vehicle that uh, a USB is playing, like USB music, and the car thinks there's USB, and so it's playing a, a, you know, a continuous song, and it's using the AUX input to transfer sound through. Okay, so the, the screen sends sound out via AUX, it goes in to this dongle, this dongle tells the car that there is a USB playing music and does the conversion for you to, for sound. Again, this sounds completely fine. This car has Harman Kardon. We'll go through it with the customer. We'll listen to it. I'll try and get you some sound clips on video and you'll see how fine it is. So I'll get that done and then do one little recap to show you what we've done again. And yeah, see what you think. Okay, so basically we've plugged the USB in, run the cable underneath that panel. You can kind of see. Right underneath this panel right here and that was easy to do because we undid those two screws and lifted it up Then what you need to do is just find the feet on each side line it up These will line the screws up screw it back down doesn't go anywhere and you've got the cable coming through I've zip tied it here to one of the main looms plugged in the AUX cable to the other end and That runs under the dash All the way up to here. This is very easy to do and then it's right here. Okay, so make sure we keep this. This is important, so don't lose that. Leave it there for now. And that is that done. Okay, so you can snake behind like I did, or you can tuck under here. Do whatever you want. It's very easy to get this cable to that area. And then just make sure it's all plugged in here properly. And then you can go ahead and sit this panel back on. It's nice and easy. You could probably do that right now. And there it is. So nice and easy and make sure the two or three plugs, you plug them back in. Otherwise things like this aren't gonna work and you won't know why. All right, let's continue on. The last section is the main harness right here. There's a little speaker on it. Disconnect it, you don't need it. Which means this white cable here, the twisted pair, you don't need. This is the section that gets done behind the radio. Okay, nice and easy. And this is very important right here. Audio out and BT, VCC, don't worry about it. So your audio out, unplug. And plug that in that's the most important thing otherwise you won't get sound and you won't know why okay then you can tape it up okay then what you want to do this is the screen connector screen connector we're going to run through there and we are going to tape this up but you don't have to do it right away you can do it after you've run it meet your hand pull it through okay so we want to get as much of the bulk out of here as we can i'll show you where that's landed all of our connectors but for now all we need is this and a pick. We're gonna open the loom. I'll open up this section of the quad log right here and pull out the two orange cables. They're fiber optic connectors. And we noticed there was in the far right hand side looking from the back or the far left looking from the front. And what we need to do is I'm gonna get a knife and we're gonna open this loom so we can get some separation here. Okay, once we've got a good amount of separation, we can tape this back up, open this quad lock, Plug that in, only goes one way. Check all your pins, check everything. As soon as something doesn't work, first thing I'm looking at, I'm looking at all of these pins, I'm checking the plugs. It's very important, okay, believe it or not, they can go in and be bent. So we plugged in the fiber optic to the new cable, bit of separation there, so it's not too crazy, but then what we're gonna do is pull these out, pull that out. The more time you spend maneuvering now, the less you'll have to worry about later. Once that's done, we can look at putting the factory radio back in. This cable here, camera 12 volt. So if you've got a reverse camera aftermarket, that's gonna go to the, cam the power of the reverse camera. Boom, easy. Camera detection, tape up, accessory in, tape up. You don't need them. So those three, forget about it. Then you've got left some plugs right here. Video input, so if you've got any video in RCA, plug it in, you can go for it. Rear camera in, that's going to be your camera video. So your camera RCA and your camera power right there. It's nice and easy. If you've got factory camera, forget these, tape them up. This is only for aftermarket. And then you've got auxiliary inputs. So this car has all factory stuff, which means all of this gets taped up and forgotten. Okay, so what I had to do was remove this because getting this cable can be a bit of a pain. So if you have to remove it, don't be shy. Just unclips and then you can go ahead and Pull your plugs through. All right, guys, so this section right here, getting these two cables, this one wasn't too bad. Getting this cable through can be a bit hard. So you might have to remove this. It's just two clips, and then it gives you a bit more room to play with. You can pop it on. And then what we want to do 
basically plug it in, slide everything back, slide the screen on, and then you can use the factory brackets to screw it in. But first we'll test. All right, so just testing. Okay, so the NTG controller works, perfect. All right, all that's looking good. Um, let's just go to NTG menu. So what we wanna see is the factory NTG all looking good. Yep, that looks fine to me. Radio. Got sound, good. And then we'll go back, back. Touch the screen to bring you back to Android. Go to telephone. Go into your settings, Bluetooth. Look for this. Boom. Put in the pin. It'll connect. Connecting. Connection successful. Phone link. Keep your phone open for this. So you've got connecting here. Watch your phone. Very important. Let's come up with your phone name and then boom. Apple CarPlay right there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is play some music. It doesn't matter what. So here, we don't hear anything. We see it here, the radio, right? So what we need to do, NTG menu, so this is the factory system now. And then we're gonna go, and we wanna change our media source. Back to phone link. And look at that. Let's not catch a copyright claim, but let's quickly just see how it sounds. Sounds really, really good. Really great. Screen's got a bit of movement. We haven't screwed it down just yet. All right. Cancel him, and there you go. So what we need to do now is quickly get everything back together, screw the screen down, um, mount this radio, and I'll probably time lapse all of that. Everything just goes back the same way it was put together, and that's it, job is done. All right guys, there it is. So this is the system. Basically, that's what you get. That's the new Android side of things. Dashboard here, the vehicle is running, showing me my door is open. Um, and that will show you as you rev, it will go up and as you drive, the speed will change. We've got correct time and date set. DVR, don't worry about. Phone link is going to be your Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Okay, so I showed you how to connect that just before via your Bluetooth. And then basically whenever you go to Z-Link, it will start connecting. And then usually within about 30 seconds, it will connect. File browser, so here you can go ahead and check all the browser files. This is like the Android side of things on its own. Video uh, is video stored on the device itself. Settings, you can go through here. There's a whole bunch of settings to play with. NTG menu brings you right back to the factory NTG system. And we're making sure that we are on iPod audio. Touching the screen brings you back to the Android. To use the NTG, you just use the little controller that comes with the car. Music stored on the device, navigation, you can change the path, and then you've got Android apps through here. You can download YouTube, Netflix, you know, all those sorts of things, Google Play Store, all here. Z-Link is your CarPlay. Um, we'll go telephone. You can, if you've already paired, you can hit Nathan's iPhone, put the password in, boom, pair. Otherwise, just search Go CD. SDK on your phone list and then put in the password. It'll connect to you. It'll bring open Z-Link. It might not do this the first time, okay? Make sure you hit use CarPlay on your phone. It'll bring up your phone name. Right about now. And then boom, you're in CarPlay. Um, that is pretty much it. You can use the NTG controller to control the screen, okay? Which is what I'm doing right now. So you don't have to use touch screen. You can if you want. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, we might do a review on one of these in the future, but this is basically it. We went through the different NTG menus at the beginning, 
Uh, if there's anything that didn't make sense, drop a comment below. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Guys, that is pretty much the installation done. It is a very straightforward install. It wasn't too hard at all. We went through pretty much everything. If there's anything that I missed, drop a comment below. If there's anything that didn't make sense, drop a comment below. Uh, the screen will be linked in the description to our website. Uh, we are located in Melbourne, for anyone that wants to know, in Australia. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.